I want to thank Sages for uh, the opportunity to present today. My name is Crystal Lang. I'm a general surgery resident uh, at Mercy Medical Center in Des Moines, Iowa. And I'm presenting, as you already mentioned, colonic fistulas following CT guided drainage of sigmoid diverticular abscesses and what's the role of the minimally invasive approach. I have no disclosures. So we know complicated diverticulitis is defined as diverticular disease with abscess, fistula, stricture, bleeding, obstruction, or free perforation. The incidence of colonic fistula is reported to be between 4% and 20% in diverticular disease. Uh, the American Society of Colon and Rectal Surgeons 2014 recommendation says that we need to consider elective colectomy for complicated diverticulitis. So we know from the literature that minimally invasive sigmoidectomy is feasible and it is safe. The role, though, of minimally invasive surgery as a standard approach in diverticular disease complicated by fistula is not completely clear and the data is sparse. The limited data that does exist um, on minimally invasive surgery for complicated diverticulitis with fistula suggests that the benefits are likely the same as with uncomplicated diverticulitis. So our primary objective in doing this study was to evaluate the perioperative outcomes of minimally invasive surgery, uh, sigmoid left colon resection, in patients who underwent CT-guided drainage of an abscess, who then subsequently developed a colonic fistula or who did not, and then eventually underwent a sigmoid or left colon resection. This was a single center retrospective study. We included patients from September of 2009 to August of 2015, and these were patients who had to uh, undergo, or when they were admitted, they underwent a CT guided drainage of a diverticular abscess, who then subsequently underwent colectomy, either elective or emergent. Patients who developed a colonic fistula had their drain removed at the time of surgery, and patients without a colonic fistula had their drain removed after they underwent a drain study showing that they had abscess resolution, and then they went to the operating room for resection. We excluded patients who had incomplete data and also anyone with a non-diverticular diagnosis such as malignancy or inflammatory bowel disease. We collected demographic and clinical variables from the electronic medical record and our statistical analysis was performed with STATA 13.0. So some of our results, 53 total patients were included in this study. 33 patients eventually developed a colonic fistula. 29 of these were colocutaneous, two were uh, enterocolic, one was colovaginal, and one was colovesical. 40 patients ultimately underwent a minimally invasive sigmoid or left colon resection. And a minimally invasive approach included a total laparoscopic approach, hand assist laparoscopic, or robotic resection. The minimally invasive approach was successful in 95% of patients. The conversion to open surgery rate was 5%. Out of the, excuse me, 23 of the 33 patients who had a colonic fistula underwent a minimally invasive surgery, and the conversion to an open surgery rate was 4.3%. There was no mortality, and overall there were 32 complications. So some of the characteristics of our patients, we first compared patients who underwent a minimally invasive approach versus an open approach. There were 40 patients who had a minimally invasive surgery and 13 who had an open surgery. Ultimately, younger patients and those with a higher BMI were more likely to undergo a minimally invasive surgery. We then looked at patients um, or compared patients who developed a colonic fistula versus those who did not. And we found that there was an increased incidence of colonic fistula formation seen in smokers and patients with a lower BMI. While it's widely known that smokers have poor wound healing and higher rates of surgical wound site infections uh, following colectomy, we don't see any previous association between smoking and fistula formation or nothing that we've seen reported in the literature. 
Uh, this graph uh, compares minimally invasive surgery versus open surgery, and the y-axis shows our perioperative outcomes. As you can see, there were significant differences uh, favoring minimally invasive surgery with fewer intraoperative complications, fewer 30-day complications, and a shorter length of stay, while there was no significant difference between operating room times between the two. Specifically, looking closer at the length of stay, this significant difference between the minimally invasive group versus the open group was 3.6 days versus 13.1 days. And this even persisted after we excluded some of the outliers. So our study overall you know, lends support for utilizing a minimally invasive approach as a primary modality for surgical intervention for just complicated diverticular disease. And furthermore, as I mentioned, we compared the patients who developed a colonic fistula and those who didn't. And there were 33 who did and 20 who did not. And there weren't any significant differences in operating room time, intraoperative complications, 30-day complications, or length of stay. So some of the limitations of this study, uh, it was retrospective. So obviously, there's going to be some selection bias and data capture limitation. For instance, uh, older, more comorbid patients were uh, more likely to go undergo a an open approach while minimally invasive surgery was reserved for our younger, healthier patients. Uh, secondly, the majority of our surgeries were performed by board-certified colorectal surgeons who had a lot of experience in complex laparoscopic cases and reoperative pelvic operations, so we can't really generalize the results to all surgeons who do colon surgery. Uh, next, to our knowledge, our cohort represents one of the largest series of colocutaneous fistulas that we've seen, but overall the cohort, as you can see, is small. And finally, we did not look at any long-term data uh, past the 30 days after surgery, so we don't have any data on recurrence of fistula rate or uh, any further complications. So in conclusion, Patients with a lower BMI and a history of smoking did have a higher incidence of colonic fistula following CT-guided drainage of an abscess. And our study shows that patients with sigmoid diverticulitis complicated by abscess formation can safely undergo minimally invasive surgery with superior outcomes following percutaneous drainage of an abscess. And then finally, patients who had a colonic fistula fistula can also undergo minimally invasive surgery with acceptable complication and conversion rates compared to those without a fistula. And so finally, a colonic fistula should not be a contraindication to a minimally invasive surgery. Thank you. Any questions from the audience? Um, I, the, the extreme difference between open and laparoscopic, uh, do you think that is purely based on the technique or is it age, comorbidities? Um, you know, if you've got a really tough case, a lot of people think, I'll just do the tough case open and reserve the laparoscopic case for the easy ones. Um, do you think there was significant bias in your, uh, when you look back at your data? I think yes, because since we didn't, you know, we looked at, say, ASA class and, um, but we didn't look specifically at the number of comorbidities, and I think that would definitely <clears throat> make a difference to in how that data you know comes out. But we didn't specifically pull out what comorbidity the patient had with laparoscopic versus open surgery. So, but yes, so I would agree there'd be a bias. After your uh, results, probably you change your plan because in our hospital we have two patients and only one opportunity to do laparoscopy. We is not out. We choose the sick patient, the old patient, the obese patient, the most comorbidity patient for laparoscopy. What do you think? <laughs> you do that, you said. No, no. What do you think now in your plan? Because you demonstrated open is not good. Or maybe it's worse than laparoscopy. To me, I would say I would choose laparoscopic, not the most comorbid perhaps, but I don't think the BMI should be a limitation at all. So. It's easy to do by the laparoscopy. Thank you. Yep. Thank you.